Hello, hello. Welcome everyone to another installment of our weekly roundup series where we look through previous weeks, or rather we look through the previous week and we try to do questions that maybe were too hard at the time. We try to look at questions that we simply just never made it to. And we try to sort of even out the corners to make sure that we're always hitting all of our questions in the same order that I started this whole thing with. Really like seeing all the new faces on the channel. You can see that now we have passed another you know, sort of milestone. I think that the next biggest milestone for me would probably be the 500 subscriber mark. And there's a lot of reasons for that. One of them is that I'll be unlocking the community feature on YouTube, which is going to allow for me to really communicate with everyone and be able to do things like ask you all questions and take posts and just sort of gauge the community a little bit better. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. We're at 354 subscribers right now. So I truly thank everyone who has taken the time to come by, stop by, listen to me, do my leak code live streams, and hopefully explore and enjoy some of the other content that I've been putting out. And that's one of the things I want to talk about today. Just a quick recap and introduction if this is your first time here. So I started this whole thing with the intent of doing every single leak code question sorted by acceptance from easiest to hardest. And I have been doing that since July 16th. You can actually watch all of these different playlists, videos in my playlist collection, Leak Code Live Easy Collection from the day I started up until now. Every single video has chapters for easy navigation and the links to the questions that we did or at least visited. So that's one thing. After some time, I thought to myself, well, I do things in JavaScript. People ask me why I do things in JavaScript and I like front end code. So I also decided to make this playlist right here with Vanilla, which is just me going through front end projects using Vanilla JavaScript, something else you can enjoy. Of course, we have our weekly roundup. And even more recently, I have decided to make playlists that are specific to Leak Code Explore cards. I realized that not everyone wants to just listen to sort of this podcast style Leak Code Live sort of thing. They, they want to watch tailored videos of specific questions being solved and have the video be shorter in length so they can just go and get what they need and then leave. And I totally understand that. And that's why I want to do that. So you can expect for there to be more playlists in the future covering all the different sorts of Explore cards. I started off with the Leco Beginner's Guide one because I thought that's just the most appropriate for being the first one. And of course, I'm going to try to level up or go through them in a logical way. But if you all have any comments or ideas of where to go next, I'd be more than happy to do that. So that pretty much leaves us with where we are right now. We're doing the weekly roundup today. I have some other things in the works. So if you're subscribed to the channel, whether you're following me on Twitch or you're subscribed to me on YouTube, just stay tuned because I have some great things coming in the future. I'm very excited to present to you all. So before you know it, you'll see it on the channel. When it happens, it'll be great. And I'm very excited for that moment to come. And I think apart from that, oh, I should also go over my, my website. So many of you all have been, I see that a lot of my traffic actually comes from my website. So I think that's amazing. Thank you all so much for visiting this website. I've had a lot of fun developing it and just working with it. You can tell I'm a very minimal person when it comes to styling. I like things very simple and I have continued to update this site as I see fit. One of the more newer things that I've added here are now this section that will lay all the different explore cards that I'm going to be doing. And I did it like this because this is almost sort of similar to how it's done on the lead code website. These are all like different cards. And if you click on this one, the only one I have right now, it'll take you to that same playlist for the beginner's guide. So without further ado, let's go get, ahead and get started. So the way I do this is I do the same thing where I go to algorithms, difficulty easy. I sort by acceptance rate. Yo, what's up, Marvin? Always great to see a familiar face here. And hope your Sunday has been going well. Hope everyone's Sunday has been going well. I'm having a cup of coffee right now. I love coffee in the morning. And this is this is the coffee that I enjoy right here. It's a Hispanic coffee. So my background, I'm American, but my dad's Puerto Rican, my mom's Dominican. And this is the coffee that I grew up with. And I love this coffee. So that's what I'm literally enjoying right now. I'm gonna have a sip right now. So cheers to any of you coffee drinkers out there. Hope you all are enjoying your nice cup of joe. To me, there's nothing like that first sip of coffee. Nothing beats that first sip of, sip of coffee for the day. Not even another cup. All right, so how do we do this? We start from page zero and we start scrolling down because what I'm looking for, I'm looking to see if there are any new questions that have come up that we just haven't solved because at the time that we did this, let's say at the time we did some of these questions almost two months ago, those questions weren't there. So they may, there may be some new questions that we haven't visited. So 
it looks like still up until now we have done every single question on page one, which is very cool. I'm watching your stream with coffee. Good luck. That's awesome. Thank you, Kasai. I love to see the interaction here on the channel. It's always very nice to see people talking and chatting and that. And again, this is what the the Lead Code live streams are supposed to be just a, a, a chance for us to relax and hang back and, you know, hopefully learn something new, but think of it like a podcast. All right, so I think this one, yeah, this one is is really tough and we should we should maybe spend we should definitely spend a little bit of time on it because we we have the time. I'm going to give myself like 20 minutes. So I'm 7 minutes into the stream now, so at the 27th mark, 27 minute mark, we'll go ahead and move on to the next one. This one is one that we've been trying to solve for a couple of days now. And let me move some stuff around here. Okay, that's good. I don't need this one. Okay, I want to keep the chat. And I I have seen a related topic about this. And one of the related topics is greedy. So it looks like, obviously, we could make decisions based on the inputs here in a greedily manner. And sometimes, oh, do you ever look at solutions or you just come back to it? So that's a great question. It really depends. Like this one, I have not looked at the solution. The only thing I've done is looked at related topics. I'm very, I'm very adamant about not looking at the solution because, and I'll briefly touch on this so we're not going into it for too much longer. But my plan, my plan is like, so you all know I'm trying to do all the easy questions, all the mediums, all the hards. So right now, all these Leco live streams are me just trying to get as close as I can to 592. Now, you can already see like we're on page four. And we've only done 246 questions, which means a lot of them are either premium or we've skipped a lot because some of them are terribly rated or they're really hard or for any number of reasons, right? So what I expect will happen is we'll probably get to like 500 questions and all the streams after that, I'm going to start making them longer and I will really take the time to go deep, deep into a question. And perhaps we'll only do one question in like two hours, but Probably in those sessions, we might be a little more forgiving to ourselves and look at more hints, look at related topics, look at discussions briefly to sort of move us in the right direction. But mostly I want to do quantity right now. And later on, we'll really do deep dives into these questions. Yeah, I mean, crumbling quick, that's that's definitely like if, if you're spending too, too long. Oh, what's up, Izzad? Izzad Ismail, thanks so much for subscribing. Great to see you on board. That's great. So, yeah, I mean, I, I leave it up to the person, right? I think as long, I think seeing the solution is okay if you feel like you gave yourself enough time to look at the problem and really digest it. I have people on my Discord that for easy, medium, and hard questions, they have spent days thinking about it. Like they are so adamant about not being solutions. They have spent like a week thinking about a question and then coming back to it. So, I think the most important thing is if you look at the solution, whether it's in an hour or one week, make sure you really understand why it works the way it does and appreciate the discussion, appreciate the solution, so on and so forth. Okay, let's see if we can get to this one. I think this one, I mean, we, we're going to have to draw this one out. I think that's going to be like the best thing for us here. So it's telling us like, I like this example because it's a little less... Let me see, one, two, three. So we have one, we have one here, and we have another one over here. This is gonna be one, this is gonna be two. Oh, and then this one will be three. And then for each one of these, we have some coins. So we have two of these coins. Let me move this whole thing down here. Sheesh. Man, I love that. Like the whole sheesh thing. That that's definitely like a younger generation. So I'm 29 years old and the the sheesh thing like I didn't I passed like that that whole thing. I missed that boat altogether obviously. Like my my girlfriend's 22, so a lot of the things that younger, well she's 23, she just turned 23. A lot of the things that people are doing nowadays, I kind of learned through her. A lot of this, um, the the younger speak, I guess. I don't know. But I have, there's this guy on my Discord. He's like 18 years old. He's one of the moderators. 
and he said it like sheesh and i'm like that's so it's funny because now i feel like i can hear and see the difference in generations so i think it's just cool i think it's pretty cool all right so we have two here and we have three or rather we have uh two and then three so how can we move them all to the same position and we want to minimize that right and it says that one of the things that we can do is do it greedily so like i think i drew this once before because we can move the two chips at position three to position two so do we always favor how do we know to move one or two positions And I thought, you know, man, I thought I thought I had drawn this out. One, one, one. We can move this one there and then this one there. I don't even think it mattered because if I do this one here and this one here, that's zero. But then this is three, right? So that's not good. Yeah, that's not good. So we definitely want to move. Like maybe the thing we want to move is the one that has the fewest amount of chips. Because if I move these chips, if I move these chips, like I, I wonder if there was like another cell here. Let me just see if I can minimize this whole thing here. Or you know what? Let's do this. If there was another cell, let's see if we can draw it. And I don't want this one to have a background. If there was another cell in here, like four. Let me see like how we can start moving things like I could well, I guess I can just move these to one. But let's say I tried something different. I was like, well, I'll just move these two this way because whatever, why not? And then I'll also move these two this way. And then I guess when I get here, I have no choice but to move uh, these to the right. So then that's two. That's like one way. But then I feel like let me see if I move two here. Then I move one over here. Well, that's going to cost me two there. Oh, well, then I can move all these three, right? And that's still two. So every every direction, every direction that's two positions to the left or right cost us zero. So two cost us zero. Have you ever watched CS50 lectures? They just started new lectures of 2022. I have absolutely watched CS50 lectures. They're phenomenal. One of my favorite and sorry to go on a tangent here, but since you brought it up, like, who is CS50, the name of the guy? Can we find his name real quick? David Milan. He did David Milan uh, web security, I think. Okay, this one, if you can find CS75, CS75, oh, CS75, okay, this one. So being a front-end developer, I think this is an awesome series right here. This is so, so fun to watch. So let me, can we, can we drop this in the chat? Highly recommended playlist right there. I think it's really fun to watch. Building, yeah, building dynamic websites takes you through a lot of very cool things. Highly recommended. All right, so let's get back to this. So two costs us zero and one costs us one, right? So can I just can I just always try and move everything as far right as I can? Like, like maybe we could do that. But then I'm also having to maybe go through this array like multiple times saying, okay, move these three, move these three to this, move these two to that. And then when I can't go anymore, do I just start? Well, actually, no, because if I had like another two here, I would do the same thing where I just move these two over here. So it's like I want to see how far right I can go in the two direction, I think. I think that's one thing we can try out. Now, how can I put that into code? That's where it gets a little bit tricky for me because it's not, oh, that's the wrong thing. I didn't want to put that. Let me open this guy up. All right, there you go. It's not like immediately clear to me. Oh, did this whole thing mess up? It's not immediately clear to me how we can show that in code. And also this, 
Well, actually, I guess this is fine. If I want to move everything over by two, what if I'm also just like, how do I say this? I'm sort of compiling things as I go along. Um, what do I mean by that? If I have something like this, let's say I have my pointer, you guys are probably all familiar with this thing I do where I use this diamond to represent a pointer. So like if I have something here, okay, and then I have something here, I can like at this moment, I can say, well, can I go two to the right? And that means, is there a valid index index to the right that I can go to? Yes, there is. So just move that one there. Then I go here. And I say, is there a index two to the right that I can go to? No. So now I'll just add two to my current. And I think maybe actually thinking about it now, let me try to make the question a little more involved. So like right here, right? Let's try our theory out and then we'll make this a test case and we'll run it through lead code and see what happens. So I'm thinking of just like, Every time I feel like two moving two is the best way because that minimizes it all together. So <clears throat> let's say min moves is equal to we just have min in the beginning. That's equal to zero. So can I move this one two to the right? I can because three is a valid index, meaning that it's it's not out of bounds. That's what I mean. So we'll move this one over there and that's it. We're done in this round. Now we come over here. Is there a valid index to the right? Yes, it's four. So I can move all these over here. Is there a valid index to like to the right that's two away? No, there's not. So now I add three. Now I add three and I move these to this top over there. And I think that could be an answer. So how could we represent this? How could we represent that now? Because this is position two, 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 three, three. And how does that work? Oh, this is position that there's two twos and three twos. Okay. And how would I show? Oh, and this is only position length. Okay. There's two twos. There's three threes. Okay. So in here, what if we had something like we have one, one, three twos, two threes. And we have what else? Oh, how do, how do we pan? Oh, hold the mouse wheel or spacebar. Okay, and then we had two fours. So I would hope the answer here is, we said three, right? I'm, I'm doing this just to see the output. One and two, okay. One, three, two, two. One, three, two, two. So if I move this over here, okay, then I get here and I move this over there. And then I move this. Okay, so that's that's not the best way of doing it. Can we do it? <clears throat> hmm. Oh wait, did I do this right? Wait a second. I have one one. I have. Oh no, it's supposed to be. Oh, I see. I see. Okay, we have two two two, three three four four. Okay, there you go. Now let's run this. Is this going to be three? Okay, expected three. That's good. So it could be that that works. So here's what I'm thinking. And this would be cool because this, this is exactly the point of the weekly roundup, right? We tried to do this before. Now we came at it again with like a fresh set of eyes. And, and hopefully we can get the right answer. So I think we can say let min equals zero. <clears throat> I can say four let i equals zero. Now the thing is, it's not also, hmm. Now it's like representing this, that's the problem. And what I mean by that is, we have this nice picture here that shows us this output but we don't have an array that shows us the same thing. Position is one, two, three. Position is two, 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 and then three, three. Do we need to take, and here we can go position dot length, position of I can be any of these. 
Let's think about this. I guess it might not really matter. <clears throat> I, I think I have to take the frequency. Position length less than or equal to 100. But the number is 1 through, but I only ever have to go to 100. But how would I fit a million in there? I think I might... I think I might just have to get the frequency of, I feel like I need the frequency of the chips. For const p of position, frequency of p equals frequency of p plus one or one. Because what I wanna do with this, once I have my position and how many of each one I have, do I also need to make an array? So it's a little bit tough only because we have one and we also have one million. We have two, but it's only position of size two. This is position of size two. I can also build an array as I see the chips. I guess the number the number doesn't really matter as long as they're in the right position. Two two two, but I can't put two 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 in position zero because then it's sort of going to be all all out of bounds. One two three one two three one and a million. We can move two chips at position three. Oh, I think, like, I feel like we have the algorithm. We know what we have to do. It's just about how to represent this in a meaningful data structure. If I have one, one, and one, two, and one, three, if I'm at one and I want to move it two positions to the right, the thing is two positions to the right here is equal to three, which just so happens to be a place where there are chips. But here, I can't say one plus three. It, this is a million, right? So I need to I need to create an array somehow that only has. And does the order of okay, into all the chips to the same position? And like, why? I guess we always have a one at least. What's the best way for me to create this array? I can put a one. I guess for every new number I see, for every new number I see, that will be a new index. Position is one, two, three. And I guess we'll always have a one. We'll always have a one. And then any new number that I see will be a new index, I guess. I think we can do that maybe. Let me see if we can try that out. So what if I did const chips is equal to a new array. Let chips, let current chip. I'm gonna say current chip is equal to one. Then I'm gonna go for const p of position. We have n chips where the position of the ith chip is position i. So if I see one, okay, maybe I could just make current chip zero. So if p is not equal to current chip, now are they always going to be next to each other? I, I would hope so. If P is not equal to the current chip, then here we can say chips dot push. I'm thinking of what to do here. Maybe here we'll say current chip plus or equals one. Chips dot push one. But what I also want is the frequency of this one at that index. 
chip stop push one. But then maybe we also want, let me think about this. Why, why is this like so weird to come up with? Like if I have one, 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 two, a one, three, zero ones, one, two, a one, three, here I have one, one, and one. Could we also do that where we just keep track of the, could we also just keep, okay, wait, I'm gonna try something else. I'm gonna say const chips is equal to this object literal. And I'm gonna set this to have an initial value of one, zero. And I'll say for const p of position. I'll say chips of p is equal to chips of p plus one or one. Right, I'm always setting it one because like this one doesn't have a one, but you can see here that we do have a one. So I'm always at least starting with one. So that will give us this. And then what we could do, we have one zero. I guess now we can just create our array based on the frequencies that we found. And I guess we can start at one. Let me see. Or let i equals to zero. This is like really tricky for me to put into code. I, I, I must be absolutely overthinking this. For i equals zero, i less than position dot length, i plus plus. I want to take the current, I want to get the current position. With the current position, I could index chips. And I can just push into some array the value that's at that location. But again, that location is not going to equal. I think I think this is not an array. No, this is this is this. This is what chip should be. I don't need an array. I don't think I need an array. If I could turn, I mean, if I could turn this into an array, it would be nice because then we can index it. And I think that's the important thing. Because this doesn't represent, it's like it says, like, I don't think when we have one and a million, does this mean that there's a million spots in between? Why is this so tricky? Well, this is not a million, but I think this means that we have two, 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 we only have one of these, and one of these is next to it. That's the way I see it. I really want to get to this. I really want to do this because I know what the answer is. I needed to move all the chips to the same position. One, two, three. Or does it even matter? Two, 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 and three, three. I need to create an array that has one, two, and three. And in each one of those spots, like this index is one, two, three, but I need like another array that this index is some crazy number. That way it's just two elements. Each element represents one, two, three, the chip position of which there can only be, so it's just the unique numbers, two and three, including one. Maybe that would be the best way of doing it. I can put it, okay. This is crazy, this is crazy. Const scene chips. I'm going to create a new set.
but I also need to start with one. There needs one needs to exist in there. <clears throat> I haven't seen a one. Okay, so that's one. And this is the position. I'm guessing the position will always be in increasing order. Why would they have them all be in different orders? So I'm at one. I haven't seen this one before. So I'll push it. And I'll add one to there. I haven't seen this one before. So I'll push it. I'll add one to there. I haven't seen this one before. So I'll push it and I'll add one to there. const this is like a great this is like i hope that you all see this as a great example of someone doing like raw raw takes to get to something okay so const chips <laughs> i'm going to set this equal to one for const p of position if we haven't seen it so I think if I haven't seen it means that the end of the current chip array is not equal to the thing we're currently on. So if P is not equal to you see, and I think we also need to, so let's do const chip frequency one zero. Okay, if P is not equal to the previous one, else in this case, if it is, so if P is not equal to chips at chips.length minus one, else chip frequency of P equals chip frequency of P plus one or one, so let's go through this one real quick. This is what I'm trying to do, and I feel like this is so convoluted, but it is what it is. We're here trying to figure it out. So one, two, three. So if P, which is one, is not equal to chips at chips.length minus one, which they are, we'll set one, we'll have we'll make this one, right? Now we get to the next one, we get to P. So if P is not equal to chips at chips dot length minus one, then we should push a new, we should say chips dot push P. And I guess this can always happen. This should always happen, right? And then we'll set two to one. And then we'll come to three at one also for that one. That's how that should end. Now let's say for this one, two, 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 three, three. We have chips one, where this is zero, right? I'm gonna start off with this for const P of position. If P is not equal to the previous one, we're gonna push P now to our chips. So our chips are one, we're going to push two and then we'll add one to two. Then we'll get to the next one. It's the same as the previous, so we'll increase this. We'll get to the next P, which is the same, which is three. Now here it's not the same, so we add three. We increase the frequency of three to one. Go to the next one, increase it to two. Okay, and then if we do this one, We have P here, we have chips one, chip frequency is this. If it's not equal to the previous one, they are. So now we say we have one of these, we go to this one. If it's not equal, now we push our million and we also have the frequency. So this is good because now we have the frequency and we also have this array. So I think we can finally get to the algorithm now. I hope you all stuck around for this because we're, we're making progress. So I'm going to set this to this. One should be zero here. This should start off with one. I'll put these next to each other. This is just like filling up our array here. 
can make this a little more condensed. Now I can say let min equals zero for let i equals zero i less than ships dot length i plus plus. Here is now where we start to do the same algorithm we had before. If i plus two is less than chips dot length else. Okay, so if i plus two is less than chips dot length, then we should say that everything at let's see. I need to get the number. Do I really even need to? I need to get the thing that we're currently at and move all of them to the one. Yeah. So I'll say const to move or position to move equals chips at i plus two. Okay. And then we can say here chip frequency at position to move plus or equals chip frequency at chips of i and then we'll say chip frequency of chips of i is equal to zero okay and then we don't do anything there else if i plus two is less than chips dot length we can move it, we keep moving it, and we should end up at a spot, right? Because we did it like this. So if i plus two is less than nums dot chips dot length, what I'm saying is position to move is chips i plus two. So position to move now is three. We'll go to, we'll get the frequency of three and to that, we'll add the frequency of one. So now this will become one. And then also here, we'll, we'll set this to zero since we've moved everything over. And then we come over here. Is i plus two less than the length? Yes, it is. So again, we get the position to move, which is i plus two, which is four. We'll say the chip frequency of four plus or equals the chips at our current position, chips of i. So we'll essentially add all this here, and then we'll set that to zero. Is i plus two? No. So now we'll what we'll do here is we'll still move it. So I can still copy this. Const position to move is chips i plus one. Chip frequency is position to move plus or equals chip frequency chips of i. We'll do this, but then we'll also say let's actually also make sure that before we do that chip frequency position to move, we can say min plus or equals chip frequency of chips i. And then we'll set that equal to zero. And then we return min. Let's see, there's some there's some cleaning up I definitely want to do here. But let's see what the answer is 11 and three. Okay, there's obviously something that we've done wrong here. And this is a great opportunity for me to go over all this. I'm really happy that I'm going through this man because well, I'm gonna have a sip of coffee one second. I wasn't able to do this the first time I saw it. So it's okay that I'm going, it's okay that I'm struggling because this is what makes, this is like what helps you get better, right? So with this image that we drew, let's see how our code actually ends up being, how it ends up working out. So imagine I'm gonna just create this array as I go along. <clears throat> This this piece right here really annoys me. I really wish there's a way that we can like make this smaller or something cuz I don't want that to be there and I still want to see my algorithm. Okay, so <clears throat> we have chips of 1. So what that means is I'm starting off with this. Right? chips of one. And I also have the frequency of one to zero. So I have nothing here. So for const p of position, which is going to be let's say, uh, how would this one look like? How, how would my position array look like here? I have one one, 
three twos, two threes, and two fours. So imagine that we're over here and we have our P and that's gonna start here for P of position. So if P, <clears throat> if one is not equal to chips at chips.length minus one, which they are equal, right? We don't push anything new. However, we do increase our frequency. So chip frequency of one is equal to chip of frequency plus one or one. So what that means is we're gonna add one here, which signifies us having a chip right here, right? And instead of, instead of actually adding one, I'll just put a number over it. Okay, now we get to the next one. P is two. Is P equal to chips at chips at length minus one? No, because two is not equal to one. That signifies me adding a new entry in this array and then setting that equal to two, right? Chips dot push P, that's cool. And then also creating a new frequency here. So now we have chip frequency of two will now equal one. So we also have one. Then we move our P, come over here. If P is not equal, they are equal, so we merely increase the frequency. We go to our next P, increase the frequency, so we have three. Now we come to the next one. They're different, so that signifies us adding a new position in here, three. And we also add one here. They're the same, so we increase the frequency. And we get to the four, that signifies us adding another position in here. Let me just copy one of these existing numbers. We add one here for the frequency, and then we get to the last one, and then we have two. So we should end up, we should end up with this, and we could double check that by removing all this just for now. Let's go ahead and print out chip frequency zero. So let's do console.log chips and chip frequency. And the one that we had come up with was that. Okay, cool. So run code, let's see what we get. So we have one, two, three, four. We have one, one, three twos, two threes, and two fours. Perfect, is that exactly what we thought, right? Now let's get to the next part of the algorithm. Here, min is equal to zero. Okay, so for let i equal to zero, now we're gonna start off with this diamond like we always do. We say, what is it that we're gonna say now? Can we, can I make, I'm gonna make this smaller just for now so we can fit more things on the screen here. So for let i equals to zero, if i plus two is less than chips dot length, which it is, what do we do? The const position to move is chips of i plus two. So if I do chips of i plus two is zero plus two, that's gonna give me a three. I wanna move it to three, right? So I say chip frequency at position to move. This is gonna be our chip frequency. So let me also paste this over here. I guess we can get the whole thing. Position to move is three. I say chip frequency at position to move, where we have a three. So chip frequency of three plus or equals chip frequency of chips of zero, which is one. So two, three, we're going to add one. So down here, we're gonna change this two to a three. And then we're saying chip frequency of chips of i, chips of i, which where i is zero is one, so chip frequency of one is now zero, right? Excuse me. So that means that now we have a zero here and now we have a three here. Now we move to the next one. Okay, if i plus two is less than chips dot length, which it is, const position to move is chips of i plus two, right? So one plus two, oh wait a second. Oh, I see, I see what's happening. This is not, these are not, no, that's fine. This is not gonna get me the actual, no, it should, it should work. Chips of i plus two is index three and index three has a value of four. So chip frequency at four, to that, we're gonna add what's currently here, right, which is five. Wait, so is that gonna work? 
let me let me actually go back a little bit here. One, three, and two. I move this over here. I move these. Okay, yeah, that, that's fine. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Okay, so over here, we get position four. Chip frequency at position to move four plus or equals the current. So that's going to make it five. And then we'll also set this to zero. And now we'll continue. If I plus two is less than chips dot length, no. So we say chip, chip frequency. This should be this. Yeah, and then we just add three. I don't know why here we have, I think I, I meant to put like a three here earlier. Position to move is chips of I plus one, so it's four. So I can say chip frequency position to move at four plus or equals whatever is here. Do we actually want to add that? Do, do we actually want to add that? If I move it from chip frequency of position to move plus or equals what I'm currently at, min plus or equals chip frequency of chips of i, which is three, and chip frequency, okay. And then what happens when we get to the end? Let's say these are just over here. How do we get 11 here? At the end, i less than chips dot length, i plus two is less than chips dot length, else. Oh, because if i plus two is less, so then we try to move it, I should only do this I should only do this if we're not already at the end. Else if i is not equal to chips dot length minus one. Let's see what we get by doing this. Four and three. Oh, we got so close this time. Oh, I think it's because we also included a one up here. This should be zero. Three and three. One, three, one. Oh, so close. So close. One, three, and two. This is two, 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 and three, three. Let's think about this. Why would it why would we be getting let me let me well, I don't want to delete all that actually. I can copy this. Let me delete everything else. Just copy that piece. So for two, two. For two, two here. Got that background. We have how many? And three and two threes here. And we got an output of three. Let's also let's also not have that there. So I try to move. Oh, really? Oh man. Yeah, that's right, because it's not just in one way. It could be multiple ways. <laughs> well, that's what happens. We spend all this time trying to do the question, and I think we did it in one way, but then this piece right here, can I move anything closer? Like, And even if I did it the other way, if I can, do I move these to the right and then this plus three? Yeah. No. Man, that's that's unfortunate. I feel like we were so close. I think at this point, see, so I think Marvin asked earlier about solutions. Like, I I think I'm probably going to look at the solution now since we've been definitely like going over this question a while. Or maybe we can look at the hints. The first move keeps the parity of the element as it is. The second move changes the parity of the element. When I think parity, I think if even or odd. Since the first move is free, if all the numbers have the same parity, the answer would be zero. If I'm the minimum cost to make all the numbers have the same parity.
What does that mean? If all the numbers have the same parity, the answer would be zero. It's it's time for discussion. Or can we look at official solution? Okay. Yeah, though marked as easy. You see, so like this is not, I don't think this is an easy question. Though marked as easy, this problem is a little tricky and requires some observations and insights. It's recommended to try a few examples to find out some regular patterns. Below, we will discuss a simple approach to solve this problem. Notice that we have two types of costs. Cost zero when moving to position I plus two or I minus two. Cost one when moving to position I plus one or position I minus one. Since move to position I plus two or position I minus two is free, it's natural to think that firstly moving chips as close as possible with zero cost. In fact, we can move all chips at even positions to position zero and move all chips to the odd positions to position one. Then we only have many chips at position zero and other chips at position one. Next, we only need to move those two piles together. I think that's mostly what I tried to do. I tried to move all, well, I guess I tried to be even more greedy and I always moved. Well, let's see, given two piles of chips located at zero and one, respectively, intuitively, it will be less effort taking to move the smaller pile to the larger one, which makes the total cost minimum of even count and odd count. Number of chips to the even positions and okay, good. Now we have a not bad cost. Can we do better? Well, now we will prove that this cost is the smallest possible one. As for the final position of the chips pile, there are only two possibilities. The final position is at the even position or the final position is at the odd position. In the first case, we need at least, we at least need to cost odd count to move all the chips at the odd positions to the even positions. Therefore is the smallest possible cost. We, need to, we just need to count the number of chips at the even positions and the number of chips at the odd positions and return the smaller one. Oh my God. Lesson learned. Coding is more about the approach you think in first 10 minutes. It more about thinking about the problem and rather than following the fixed style of coding. Problem is really good to test somebody's logic. Lico, please make more problems like this. I mean, we're, uh, I don't know if we're on the right track. I mean, I, I really, really made this question way harder than it needed to be, but this is like, this is on another, this is on another level, man. <clears throat> if everything was, if all the odd chips were in one and all, I mean, yeah, like, I definitely was not thinking that. And when I read about this, something like this about saying like, But a good problem, a sore box can confuse mind. When it talks about logic, I'm like, oh man, I gotta work on my logic, you know? Fabulous question. Lee Coach should put more questions like this in their inventory. There's water if you look at the actual evidence. The closer you look, the less you see. On this question, and also not the solution provided. Python simple, odd even approach. You might initially think we need to try all possibilities, possibly using dynamic programming, but the question isn't easy for a reason. The key observation here is that it's free to move a chip from an even number to another even number, and it's free to move a chip from an odd number to another odd number. It only costs to move an even to an odd or an odd to an even. Therefore, we want to minimize such moves. All chips must be on the same position once we're done, which is either even or odd. Therefore, we want to calculate, yeah, that's, this is really, really a great question. I mean, we spent a whole hour. I was unable to figure it out, but I don't feel bad about it because now at least we know for any else, for anything else we see like this, we'll be more, we'll be like more readily prepared. Let's see what other people want, need to say about this. Someone please explain the intuition behind getting even or odd count would be super helpful. Just try as many different cases as you can. Doing so, you get the intuition automatically. Think of it this way, moving any coin to an even index. Okay, well, I'm not gonna, I mean, we could, I guess for the sake of it, we should just actually do the question ourselves, right? So let's say let odd count equal to zero, let, or even count, let odd count equal to zero for const p of position if 
p modulo 2 is equal to 0. We'll say even count plus plus, else odd count plus plus. Return math.min of even count and odd count. So let's see. I mean, obviously, we just saw the solution. But that's that's an incredible question. I mean, it makes sense that we were unable to get it. I think like we weren't able to solve it the first time because it is a, a harder, easy question. Let's see what the next one would have had in store for us. Because we just did minimum cost. I mean, that was page two. Minimum time to type word using a special typewriter. Yeah, we're, we're about to hit the hour mark, so I, I wouldn't want to spend much more time on any more questions. So I think I'll wrap up today's weekly roundup with just having looked at a sim like a single question, which that's probably like what I was talking about earlier, the closer we get to the end, you can expect more streams to be like this. So I personally had a lot of fun doing this and I learned a lot. You might see that I'm pushing more towards reading discussions like after we tried so, so much. I think we probably had we spent more time we could have gotten there i feel like i was on the right track although i think i was focusing more on the greedy algorithm like someone had pointed out and to be honest i wasn't really thinking about moving everything to either odd or even i mean i knew that like if we can move everything to places it'd be free so we should try and do that as many times as we can but then i also tried to move like as soon as the moving two positions to left or right didn't work, I immediately considered moving the position one to the left or right, where I should have done it like both ways. So happy with that, happy with the stream today. We're gonna continue tomorrow with our normal LeetCode live streams. Later today, I'll probably put up another video for one of the LeetCode Explorer cards, so stick around for that. Make sure you subscribe if that's something that you're interested in. And thank you all so much to the people who watch. Remember, this stream is not, my intention with these streams at least is not really to teach you. It's just more of an opportunity for you to see someone struggle, what I'm thinking of, giving a shot at something. Because, like, I'll be honest, a lot of these top interview questions, we all focus on a lot. Like, a lot of people focus on these questions, right? And so, because there's so much, like, there's so much documentation about these questions, so many videos, like, I can probably do more of these questions. Like, I might find something like, let's see, like, I've done threesome before. And I would say threesome, because I've done it so many times, is easier than the coin problem we just did. But it doesn't necessarily mean that the coin problem is, how would I say it, harder or anything. It just means that I haven't had the experience. So that's really what I wanna sort of get out there. Like, it just comes down to experience and having done similar questions before. The difficulty does matter, but if you see a lot of videos about median of two sorted arrays, then you can figure out median two sorted arrays. And you might feel like, oh, if I can do a hard, I can do anything else. But I, I really don't think that's the that's the way of looking at it. So anyway, thank you all so much to, for watching. Hope you all have a great rest of your Sunday. If you're into football, hope you enjoy some football today. And yeah, have a great rest of your day. Stick around for some more videos, and I'll see you all tomorrow for another stream.